Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to all people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, whose Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, is the light of the world, grant that your people, illumined by your word and sacraments, may shine with the radiance of Christ's glory, that he may be known, worshipped, and obeyed to the ends of the earth, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the first book of Samuel. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was, ra was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli, and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and laid down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, See, I am about to do something in Israel that will make, that will make both ears of anyone who hears it tingle. On that day I will fulfill against Eli all that I have spoken concerning his house, from beginning to end. For I have told him that I am about to punish his house forever. The, in, the iniquity, iniquity that he knew, because his sons were blaspheming God, and he did not restrain them. Therefore I swear to the house of Eli that the iniquity of Eli's house shall not be expiated by sacrifice or offering forever. Samuel lay there until morning. Then he opened the doors of the house of the Lord. Samuel was afraid to tell the vision to Eli, but Eli called Samuel and said, Samuel, my son. He said, Here I am, Eli said. What was it he told you? Do not hide from me. May God do so to you and more also, if you hide anything from me of all that he told you. So Samuel told him everything and hid nothing from him. Then he said, It is the Lord. Let him do what he seems good to him. As Samuel grew up, the Lord was with him and let none of his words fall to the ground. And all Israel, from Dan to Beersheba, knew that Samuel was trustworthy prophet to the Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to join me in saying Psalm 139 with me. Lord, you have searched me out and known me. You know my sitting down and my rising up. You discern my thoughts from afar. 
You trace my journeys and my resting places, and are acquainted with all my ways. Indeed, there is not a word on my lips, but you, O Lord, know it all together. You press upon me behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain to it. For you yourself created my inmost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I will thank you because I am marvelously made. Your works are wonderful, and I know it well. My body was not hidden from you while I was being made in secret and woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my limbs, yet unfinished in the womb. All of them were written in your book. They were fashioned day by day, when as yet there was none of them. How deep I find your thoughts, O God! How great is the sum of them! If I were to count them, they would be more in number than the sand. To count them all, my lifespan would need to be like yours. A reading from 1 Corinthians. All things are lawful for me, but not all things are beneficial. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be dominated by anything. Food is meant for the stomach and the stomach for, the food, for food, and God will destroy both one and the other. The body is meant not for fornication, but for the Lord, and the Lord for the body. And God raised the Lord and will also raise us by his power. Do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ? Should I therefore take the members of Christ and make them members of a prostitute? Never. Do you not know that whoever is united to a prostitute becomes one body with her? For it is said, the two shall be one flesh. But anyone united to the Lord becomes one spirit with him. Shun fornication. Every sin that a person commits is outside the body. But the fornicator sins against the body itself. Or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, which you have from God, and that you are not your own? For you were brought with a, bought with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, follow me. Now Philip was from, was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathan and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses and the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said to him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly, I tell you, you will see heaven opened and angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. It's well known that preconceptions can blind us to the truth, especially when the truth isn't what we expect to hear or even what we want to hear. 
Both the lesson from Isaiah and the one from the Gospel, according to John, illustrate this point beautifully today. Now, we're going to leave the epistle out today. We're not going to comment on that. When I realized that my family was appointed to be the ones who were to read the lessons today, I think you'll understand why I asked my wife to read that lesson from the epistle and not one of my boys. <laughs> In 1 Samuel, we hear the story of the calling of this person, Samuel. Samuel's mother, Hannah, had desperately wanted to have a child, and when she finally became pregnant and she finally gave birth, she dedicated this child to the service of God in the temple. And when we find him today, Samuel is asleep in his bed in the temple where he serves under a man named Eli. The temple, mind you, isn't the huge structure that we would come to know in Jerusalem, but is at this point a set of smaller structures at a place called Shiloh. And just before dawn, Samuel hears this voice that is calling his name three times. Samuel wakes up and he goes to the priest Eli to inquire about what it is that he wants. Samuel assumes that the voice he hears is Eli's because no one else is around. His preconceptions send him searching, but in the wrong place. For it wasn't Eli who was calling him, but the very Lord God. In our Gospel reading, we hear about the calling of the last disciples, Philip and Nathaniel. And Philip approaches Nathaniel and says, Hey, we have found him. Remember that one about whom the Moses and about whom Moses and the prophets had had taught? Well, it turns out he's Jesus. He is the son of Joseph of Nazareth. And hey, he is right over there. Nazareth is a tiny place. I can't overstate that fact especially at the time of Jesus. And if you were to visit Nazareth today, which isn't exactly still a hopping metropolis, <clears throat> you can go and tour and visit some of the ruins of the Nazareth of Jesus' own day and see for yourself exactly how tiny it was, not much bigger than the nave of Holy Trinity. And prejudices against small and uh, uh, unworldly people and places then, just like now, led most people to believe that nothing good, nothing of any real worth, could come from this tiny place, Nazareth. And so Nathaniel's preconceptions about Nazareth blind him to the truth that literally stands right in front of him. And, you know, our own preconceptions tend to do the same for us from time to time. Because we assume things are a certain way, then we only look for them to be that way. When in fact, you and I both know that a situation may unfold in a dramatically different manner than we'd expected. Or something remarkably more audacious may be asked of us than what we're actually ready to hear. Sometimes, you know, the stumbling blocks caused by our preconceptions are pretty innocuous. Just think about when you've gone to see a, a movie that's been made from a book, but you had read the book first, and you go, and you have a really hard time getting into the character choices that the filmmaker has made because that picture from your mind from when you read the book is so vivid that you can't get past it. Other times, though, our preconceptions can limit the thing about which we've come to conclusions, and that is dangerous. We become blinded to reality. We become blinded to opportunity. We become blinded to responsibility. Just think of how many people, shaped by centuries of false beliefs and myths, assumed certain things about race 
to be true. Tomorrow, our nation commemorates a prophet whose words went unheeded by many at the time and still today. Blessed Martin may have declared undeniable truth when he said that darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. And hate cannot drive out hate. Only love can do that. But you know as well as I that preconceptions formed from generations of lies to the opposite still hold sway in our country. Powerful untruths have been planted in our psyches, and they must be confronted, named, and put aside before the truth of equality that stands right in front of us can be recognized. This is the work of our beloved community task force here at Holy Trinity. Racism is totally antithetical to the gospel. Any racism at church isn't political. It is Jesus-centered, gospel-based work. If this kind of work coincides, or doesn't coincide, with one's particular politics, that's not the church's fault. The beloved community task force and vestry have named that truth, and they are inviting us all to claim it, to set aside our preconceptions, and to stand in the light of truth. To not take this work seriously, well, friends, that's dangerous. To not take this work seriously is to feed the very kind of unchristian hatred and violence that we saw on display at our nation's very heart but a week and a half ago. In our Old Testament lesson, Samuel, he has certain expectations for what is possible. His expectations for what is and isn't possible then get in the way of him listening for God calling in the night. Finally, after he goes and wakes poor Eli up three times to see why he's called him, Eli says to Samuel, listen, boy, (laughs) just go lay down again. And the next time you hear that voice respond to it by saying, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. And there we have it. Sometimes we are simply called to listen. To listen without preconceived ideas about what's proper or what's not, about what's possible or what's not. And by listening, we allow God to define God's self. We allow God to define what is possible for God. We allow God to be God. In the Gospel reading today, Nathaniel's preconceptions about Nazareth and its unworthiness of bringing forth the Messiah, well, they could have impeded his response to Philip. The difference between Nathanael's future as a disciple or his future doing whatever it was he was doing before Philip came to him is in his willingness to go and see Jesus even with his doubts. He, Nathanael, is open to having his preconceptions proven wrong. And that, friends, is key for all of us. One commentator reminds us that 
that God speaks to us often when we least expect it and with a word we do not always welcome. Often we want to stop our ears and pretend we do not hear God's voice. Often we do not want to follow God's will, preferring instead to do what we want when we want. Yet the promise from God is that when we accept God's word, we will see great things, just as Jesus promises Nathaniel. Being open to receive God's word means that sometimes we must be quiet and stop our minds. Following God's word means that we must sometimes go where we do not want to go. And so, like Samuel, might we pray continually, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Listening. And like Nathaniel, might we go even when we have doubts. In this season of Epiphany, in which we celebrate God's self-revelation in Christ, listen. Listen and watch for that still unfolding identity of he whom we follow. He's in that person sitting next to you, whose skin has a different hue than yours. He's in that homeless person, rummaging through the trash can behind your office. He's in that salesperson who's driving you crazy because she can't find what it is that you really want to buy. He's in that person, this is the hardest for me, who just cut you off in traffic. He's in those far off and foreign faces that we see every night on the news. So look for Christ everywhere. Listen for Christ at all times. And allow yourself to be surprised by the unexpected. Now let us affirm our faith, saying together, We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name 
we may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. We pray especially for Kimberly Dunn, postulant for the priesthood, and Mar Maureen Flack and Joe Zugan, candidates preparing for the diaconate. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Guide the people of this land and all the nations in ways in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve common good. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own, own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Bless all who bless all whose lives are close to, closely linked with ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love another lo, and love one another as he loves us. Lord in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Give them courage and hope it in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy. <clears throat> Hear our prayer. We will commend to your mercy all who have died, especially Vivian May Butler Thomas, that your, your will for them may be fulfilled. And we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Friends, I am so thankful to be back with you worshiping on this Sunday morning, the second Sunday after Epiphany, after a couple weeks of some pretty bad bronchitis. Not COVID, I was tested multiple times, but pretty bad bronchitis. I am glad to be back here at Holy Trinity. A few reminders for the well-being of our community. Don't forget <clears throat> that our bi-weekly conversation uh, about the book being uh, an anti-racist church is now up and running. We've had our first week and information continues to be available in the epistle. Check out the epistle as well and read all the way down to the bottom because every week in there I want you to take note of those highlighted places where it says Holy Trinity is being the church because friends it has been a long time since we've been together. And I totally understand the sense of disconnection that many of us feel. And I hate it. I want to get to know you. And in the meantime, we're doing all that we can. We're offering, you'll hear a host of things for this coming Lent with covenant groups and opportunities to get together in small groups on Zoom to get to know one another. But in the meantime, we've got to do our best to love one another by keeping each other safe. 
and that means not getting together in the normal ways. But one bright spot is that next Sunday, we were going to be closed for another two weeks for in-person worship, but we've decided to open up for a hybrid of sorts. And so the Eucharist will be celebrated here in the church and streamed live on Facebook on Sunday morning. So that's beginning next week and for the week after. And then, you know, we're just we're we're going to have to decide as we go along. But for two weeks, uh, it will be streamed live on Sunday morning. You're invited to come and sit in the parking lot. We're not going to have crowds gathered together on the terrace. But we will have you available to be, you can sit in the parking lot, you can sit along Green Street there in your car, follow along with the service on Facebook Live on your phone, and then we will bring communion out to you. So I hope you recognize that we're doing all that we can to try to continue to offer that touchstone of, of activity and life here at Holy Trinity, which I know means so much for so many of us. I hope you will choose to take advantage of it. If you feel safe, then come and sit in your car. If you don't feel safe, then you stay home and you worship from home just like always. We're all doing what we need to do to stay safe during this time, but know that we love you and are praying for you and want to see you if you can, if you feel comfortable, if you feel safe. But there's, you know, of course, no pressure for that. We're just all grasping at straws right now, trying to keep this community together as best we can. Ascribe to the Lord the honor due his name. Bring offerings and come into his courts.
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. And lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We give thanks to you, O God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all in the word made flesh, Jesus your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death, into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, According to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country, where with all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him, and with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Be known to us, Lord Jesus, in the breaking of the bread. These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Mm -hmm.
go, I'm gonna let it shine. Everywhere I go, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine, let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the blessing of the God who loves you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Spirit. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God.